Okay. Yes. Okay, so the final talk in uh, this session is by uh, Olivier Mathieu from the University of Lyon in France. And he's going to talk about on um, free Jordan algebras. Olivier. Thank you very much, David. And I'm sorry for these uh, complica complications. So I want to say hello to everyone. And I would like to speak about three Jordan algebras, and it is based on three joint works, and one is with Irina Kashuba, it is published in Advance in Maths. The second one is with Mikhail Lau, it is archi archive preprint, and the third one is uh, with Jerome Germany. And I will write the corresponding affiliation for uh, Irina, it is Sustek. For Michael Lau, it is University Laval. And for Germany, it is University of Lyon. So, can you see now page two? Hello. Uh, yes, we can. We can. Okay. So, I take uh, integer D and let G of D is a free Jordan algebra over C on generators X1, XD. And then the Jordan algebra itself has a decomposition into homogeneous component of degree N. And homogeneous component of degree N is simply all free Jordan polynomials which are homogeneous of degree N. So for example, the zero part is simply the ground field, C. The degree one part is simply the space generated by generators, and so on. And a general question is to describe the free Jordan algebra, meaning describing all homogeneous component, Gn of D, for any n. And this is not known, but at least we have a conjectural answer. And the conjectural answer is that we can describe Gn of D as a GL module. And But this conjectural answer is a bit difficult to explain. It involves a complicated combinatorics involving uh, lambda rings. So I don't want to explain it. What I would to explain now is simply how to determine the dimensions. Dimension is a part of the structure. Now I'm on page four. And this description depends on some datum, very simple datum, which is a polynomial Psi. Psi is a polynomial D, D is the number of generators, Z times T minus one, plus one minus DZ minus T. So it is a polynomial into T, T minus one and Z. Okay, I wrote formal series in Z, but indeed it is uh, degree one in Z. So it's a very simple object. And this object, determine conjecturally the dimension of components of the Jordan algebras. Indeed, there is a second, the conjecture is the following. There is a second an for all integer n bigger than one, which is a unique solution of this equation. So the equation is when you compute the residue at t equals zero, of psi, sorry, I forgot. I should add dt. The, the residue of this should be equal to zero. And the residue means when you expand this expression, you take the term of degree minus one in t. This is what is called the residue. And the residue is a polynomial in z, and you want this polynomial to be zero. And you can check inductively that there is a unique 
seconds a n which satisfies this property. And conject, so it's a complicated recurrence um, recurrence def definition, but it is unique. And conjecturally, this a n describe exactly the dimension of g n of t. That's a conjecture. So what is the nature of the conjecture? The conjecture is extremely elementary. You see, it's a purely combinatorial conjecture, but it's a bit mysterious. You can ask, probably you don't, you can ask yourself why there is this complicated, this strange expression. Okay, how we can, how we can come out with this strange expression. But this elementary but mysterious conjecture is still is supported by some numerical evidence. So for example, the conjecture is true for one variable, for any n, and this is based on uh, a, a, a Jacobi triple identity. For d equal to, compute, we check for all integer n less than 15. For d, d equal 3, we check it for n less than seven, and for d at least four, we check it for n less or equal than six. So this numerically it's already quite good, but, but what we want is something more theoretical. So we want to explain in a more theoretical viewpoint the net the conjecture. And Indeed, there are results connected to the conjecture, and there are three types of theoretical results. One is in my work with uh, Irina Kashuba, the second one with Mikhail Lau, and the third one with Jerome German. So the first type of result, it's about Lie algebra cohomology. Second type is about representation theory. And the third one, is about special identities. And I would like to spend more time on the last section, special identities, because it is quite, uh, it is a recent result with Jerome. But first, let me explain the connection with Lie algebra cohomology. So I start with a Jordan algebra J. And to each Jordan algebra, one can associate, accordingly to Tits, um, some Lie algebra SL2 object. It is called now the TKK construction because uh, what's going on is that first paper of Tits it does not involve SL2, it involves simple Lie algebras of dimension three which over an algebraically field mean SL2. And then probably Kirchner was unaware of Tits construction and then later he built it for SL2. And then later on again, Cantor uh, start with a similar construction, but this one is not really related to Tits, the work of Tits. It is connected with Lie algebras, which have a short grading. And so really the counterpart of the construction will be not really involved here. But here we follow a refinement, which is much more recent, which is due to Allison and Gao, which find a Lie algebra SL2J, which is in addition simply connected. So now let's introduce a category that I call TITS category. It's a category of all SL2 modules, SL2C module, M, such that M is a direct sum of an isotypical component of type adjoint plus a trivial component. So the dimension of J can be Dimension of M, sorry, is arbitrary. Could be anything, of course. 
So, but as a category, it's really something very obvious category. And in this category, you can look at Lie algebras. It means Lie algebras on which SL2 acts as, of course, Lie algebra of derivation and which belongs to this category. And it's very easy to prove that the Titz-Alison-Gao construction of SL2 of G of D, D, sorry, this is a free Lie algebra in this category. It's not a free Lie algebra by itself, but restricted to this category, it's a free Lie algebra. And when you hear the free Lie algebra, you immediately ex expect some vanishing of cohomology, of course, because so. And so, therefore, it is very natural to expect that the cohomology of this Lie algebra SL2 of G of D, D sorry, is trivial. This is conjecture two. It cannot be completely trivial because SL2C is a retract in SL2 of G of D. D, sorry. Here, G of D contains a unit. So the cohomology of SL2 of G of D should contain at least this cohomology of SL2 of C, which, is, which has dimension two. But the conjecture is that there is nothing more. Equivalently, you can say that the cohomology, relative cohomology, as defined by Kozul, is trivial. Anyhow, this is completely equivalent. And this conjecture is very extremely natural in terms of Lie algebra cohomology and the theorem proved by uh, Kashuba and myself is that the conjecture two implies the first conjecture about the dimension of uh, components. And this is a very, so now this new conjecture, conjecture two, is extremely natural, means in terms of free structure, it's very natural, but of course it's much more sophisticated. So at least it means that this conjecture can be interpreted in some aspect. Unfortunately, I don't know how to prove it, but what I was trying to do is proving results which are connected with this conjecture, which are in agreement with this conjecture. New result. And the first result is about representation theory. So I take the Lie algebra SL2 of G of D, this algebra I already defined, and exactly because G of D is a graded Jordan algebra, the Lie algebra has grading and the zero part is SL to C. And I take the category C, which is a category of graded and finite dimensional SL to G modules. This is a very natural category. And it's very easy to classify simple modules because if you have a simple module, then the positive part will act trivially. So simple modules are simply the SL2 modules, Ln, and there is a shift M. It means that Ln should have a grading, which is purely in degree M, but basically it is simple SL2 modules. So the simple modules are very easy to describe. And Now I can write the category C as a union of category C of N, where a module M is in C of N, if and then if its simple subquotients have these have dimension less than N plus one, N plus one. Yeah. It means the simple subquotient are LK, where K is less or equal than n. 
Okay. And of course, any finite dimensional module belongs to some C of n. So the category C is a union of, of this. And I can define, we, we can define a module delta of n, which is a projective cover of Ln in Cn. The existence of this module is not obvious because when you take all cover of Ln in the category Cn, you have to prove that these essential covers that there is a uniform bound for the dimension of those. So it's a little bit like Bernstein problem. But there is a universal bound. And so there is a relative projective cover of Ln. And the proof is based on the result of Zelmanov about nil Jordan algebras. And therefore, these partially um, projective modules delta n do exist, but we don't have explicit formula for the dimension. Only for, uh, for d equal one, we have explicit formula, uh, which is based on the work by Raika Dei. Indeed, the work of Raika Dei does not involve at all Jordan algebras. She did work on uh, affine, representation of affine algebras. But we can translate a result in terms here. And so the category C is a category with Vi modules. This is called Vi modules, delta N. And they are dual, they are dual of Vi module. And this is a basic block to build what is called highest weight categories. And of course, we would like to prove that this category is a highest weight category, but it's not easy. So we just have a conjecture that it is the case. Uh, it is a case only if uh, the journal algebra is free journal algebra. Otherwise, uh, if the journal algebra is not free, this is not highest weight category. And but we proved. This is very easy proof that conjecture this conjecture three implies the previous conjectures. And why do why do I believe to this conjecture? Because these highest weight categories were introduced in the 80s by many people, and they were used by Klein, Parshall, Scott, and then Van der Kallen and Duncan. Uh, in the theory of algebraic groups in characteristic P. And for algebraic groups in characteristic P, like SL2 of FP bar, the conjecture three is a theorem by Klim, Pasha, Scott, and van der Kallen. And it is not, it's not a so easy theorem. It is based on vanishing, uh, some vanishing cohomology, which is not, totally obvious. And indeed, Klein, Parshall, Scott, and Van der Kallen theorem works for all algebraic groups. But in some sense, it's very analogous. You see, for G equal SL2 of FP bar, you define the category CN exactly in the same way. So it's really very extremely similar. And I was expecting that this is a kind of reason to believe. Now, I came to explain something, some new result about, with Germany about um, special identities. But first, I need to define what um, 
operad is. I was going to explain what operad is, but this morning, uh, uh, Pavel gave a very nice lecture where he explained exactly what an operad is and what a variety of algebra is. And, you know, variety of algebra was very common in the east of Europe, and operad was very common in the west. Oh, sorry, cyclic op yeah, operad were very common in the west, and basically it describes the same thing. But there is a addition, there is something special with operads that has no does not correspond to anything in terms of variety of algebras if what is called cyclicity. And I will explain what cyclicity means. So I take, uh, I will not explain precisely, but I will explain the consequence of that. So first, I need to define the free associative algebra T of D. I need the involution, which sends sigma sigma of xi equal xi. And you know, for associative algebra, an involution means an involution means an anti-involution. So it means that sigma of x1, x2 is of course x2, x1. So this involution is not the identity. So we can look at the fixed point in T of D of sigma, and I call C of D the con algebra. I call it con algebra, and indeed it is stable by two kinds of operations. First, it is the Jordan product, means the symmetric part of the product. So it's A1, A2, maps to A1, A2 plus A2, A1. And it's also stable by the tetrad operation. Means we, if we have four element, A1 up to A4, you can map it to the sum of all products with some sign. But uh, it is not clear what, what are the relation between these two operations. And let S of D, the image of the Jordan algebra, free Jordan algebra in C of D, in the tensor algebra, and it is called the free special Jordan algebra. Okay, this is for definition. Uh, unfortunately, here I need a lot of definitions. And now I take the multilinear part of all of these objects. So I take G of N, the multilinear part of Gn of N, and so on. So I get a lot of multilinear part. And I can define the special identities. This is the multilinear polynomial a Jordan polynomial, which become zero when I specialize this polynomial to some associative algebra. And I can also define the missing tetrads. The missing tetrads are the element of on the con algebra, which are not in the free special uh, Jordan algebra. This is the, the what you miss this, and MN denote the multilinear part. Oops, sorry. And then, and then each of these species are representation of the symmetry group SN for obvious reason. It is multilinear polynomials in N variables. So they are obviously SN modules. And the theorem that we proved with uh, Kashuba is that all the species are indeed representation of SN plus one. It means that the SN action extends to SN plus one. And indeed, all these actions are compatible. And in addition, this additional action satisfies some identity, it is what's called a cyclic operator. 
they are all cyclic operands. So I don't want to define uh, what a cyclic operand is. The main point is that there is an action of Sn plus one, mysterious action of Sn plus one. And as a conclusion of this is that the missing tetrads and the special identities are Sn plus one modules. So let me remember that Glenny computed the dimension of the multilinear part of, it, does, it did not compute this exactly, it, may, it, it did the equivalent computation, but basically Glenny computed the dimension of the missing tetrads for n less or equal than seven. But if we know that it is a cyclic module, then we can do something better. We can compute it Mn as a Sn module for all n less or equal than seven. That's an amusing thing because when you look at the dimension of Mn, quickly you realize that there is only finitely many possibilities for the action of Sn. And, but the way to distinguish is that there is only one possibility which extends to Sn plus one action. So that's, that's the way to do it. But more interesting, what is more interesting is for the special identities. Glenny shows that there is no special identities for in degree less than seven, but in degree eight, there is one identity, which is called the Glenny identity. What do I call one identity? And the Glenny identity is a special generator of this module. You know, any simple representation of the symmetry groups has a special generator, which is given by sure, by sure formulas. Exactly, it's not one generator, it's one generator up to scalar. But anyhow, the Glenny identity is precisely this generator. Uh, but now, We know, okay, I will write, if I have a little bit of time, yeah, I don't have so much time because of these, these problems, but I will write Glenny identities. One way to write down Glenny identity is the following. You start with the following polynomial, G of X, Y, Z, this is the bracket, of x, y, z cube by z. A priori, this is an element, this is a associative polynomial. But indeed, it's very easy to show that it belongs to the con algebra. It's very sim sim simple to show that it is symmetric. But in degree three, this uh, con algebra is the same as a special Jordan algebra by Shirchhoff con theorem. And in addition of that, uh, in addition of that, this in degree seven, this is the same as free Jordan polynomial. Means this associative Jordan polynomial can be written uniquely as a free Jordan polynomial. This can be seen either by using Glenny theorem or by using McDonald theorem, which says that there is no. Um, 
special identity of in three variables which are linear in the last variable. So at the end, G is a free Jordan polynomial. So now you can define the Glenny polynomial as follows. You take J of X, Y, Z square, because it's a free polynomial, you can substitute Z to D square minus twice uh, G X Y Z times Z. So this is Jordan product. And you easily check that um, when you specialize it, when you send it to an associative algebra, this is zero. So J is a special identity. And Grady prove that this identity is not zero. And now I describe you an identity in, with three variables, but now you can, by polarization, make a multilinear part of this. So this is the Grady identity. And now, we look at this Glenny identity, and we know that we know that it is um, S nine model because of this cyclicity, and so <clears throat> we have to determine what is the S nine model generated by L by by J, and with. Uh, Jérôme Germany will prove that it corresponds to the Young diagram 3, 3, 2, 1. And it means that as a S8 module, it generates something which has uh, three irreducible components. The first corresponds to Young diagram 3, 3, 2, and two other identities. And so the conclusion of this is that we get two new identities. By new identities, we mean you take these simple modules, 3, 3, 1, 1, and 3, 2, 2, 1, and you take the sure generator, and you get something which cannot be deduced from any identity by using the usual uh, S8 action. So that there are new identities. And of course, these new identities can be realized in the free journal algebra with four generators. And I will not write it. Uh, because there is more than about 100 terms. So either you give me uh, another 100 minutes, or I will skip it. And I would prefer to skip it. So now, I would like to explain, to finish, I would like to explain the proof. And the proof is based on computer computation. The trick is that we can form, uh, out of the Glenny identity, we can build this new identity of which correspond, which is of weight 3311, say. And the problem is to show that if this identity, new identity, is zero or not. And we, uh, Germ Germany proved that this is not zero by evaluation in the uh, Albert algebra. Because you know, Computing the free Jordan algebra is almost impossible. It's extremely difficult. There is no, I don't know a good software to do, do so. But we simply, but computing in Albert algebra is relatively easy. And simply we check that these identities are Albert identities, it means they are uh, uh, polynomial, which are zero in the associative algebras, but not zero in the Albert algebra. And why it is connected with the conjecture 
it is connected with a conjecture because the fact that conjecture two implied conjecture one was really based on cyclicity. You know, conjecture two was conjecture about cohomology, conjecture one about the dimension. The proof is based on cyclicity. And when you look carefully about this conjecture and this cyclicity together, practically uh, it forces you to think that there should be new identities uh, of the degree eight. Maybe it's even a consequence, but uh, making comp explicit computation could be a bit difficult, but I believe it is a consequence of the conjecture. And therefore, it's very nice that some consequences can be proved uh, directly, means without proving the conjecture. So in some sense, it is a theoretical support for the conjecture. So I believe now my time is over. So I thank you very much for invitation. And um, I would like to say I'm, I'm very sorry for these uh, technical difficulties at the beginning with my iPad. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Olivier. Yeah, I, I'm sorry too for the problems that you experienced at the beginning, but it was worth waiting for. Um, are there any comments or uh, questions? Nope, then can we thank uh, uh, Professor Mathieu in I, the- I have room. a comment, I, I ah, have a comment. Sorry, okay. Of course, of course. <laughs> My comment is that of course it's much more, uh, say, uh, pleasant to give uh, talk uh, directly, not online. And uh, I'm very sorry because for me, it's much more difficult to give talks uh, like this. So that's my only comment. Thank you very much. So can we thank uh, Professor Matthew for his very nice talk? Thank you. OK, so uh, that uh, completes the second session. Um, we have a, a break now of about an hour and uh, 10 minutes uh, before the commencement of uh, session three, uh, which will start at 1500 hours or 3 p.m. GMT. Okay, so see you back here in just over an hour. Thank you. <laughs>